Hi S2, it's Miss Dean here, and this PowerPoint and this video is going to take you through one of our first tasks. We're going to be learning a little bit about report writing and we're going to be starting off with a mini report on BATS. So let's have a little look. So first of all, let's think about what we're doing. What is a report? Well, a report is a type of non-fiction writing. This means that everything you include in your report should be true. Non-fiction is the opposite of fiction. Fiction is made up stories. Reports often include information from many different sources. In future, as you go further up the school, you'll probably find that you have more tasks where you're writing reports and you have to go and research them. You might have to go and find out all the information yourself. In fact, later on in this unit of work, you are going to have to do some research by yourself to write a report. For just now though, we're going to give you the sources, we're going to give you the information, but you're going to have to read it through carefully and decide what information from it you are going to use. You have to choose the information that is relevant, that means that it has something to do with the topic of your report, and you have to organise it in a way that makes sense. So you have to think carefully about what information you are going to include, why you're going to include it, and what order you're going to put it in so that the person who reads it will be able to follow it and make sense of what you're writing. What you want to avoid is just having a big jumble of facts. If you just have a big jumble of facts, it's not in any kind of order, then the person who reads it probably won't even read the whole thing. They'll probably stop after a few minutes and they'll think, I can't follow this, I don't understand what it's about. It's your choice of information and the organisation of your information that's going to make it nice and easy to read. And that's particularly what we're going to focus on just now for this report. So your report is going to have three main sections. You might want to note down the headings for these sections on a bit of paper, and then you can make notes under them whilst you're watching this video. So the first section is going to be facts about bats. It should include their physical makeup, that just means what they're physically like as animals, their habits, where they live, and some wrong ideas that people have about bats. Your second section should be about the reasons for their disappearing, and your third section should be about what is being done to protect them. So again, you might want to copy those headings down just now on a bit of paper, and leave plenty of room in between each one so that you can note down some of the key pieces of information. You will probably find that your first section, section one, will be by far the longest. So I would suggest leaving the most space for section one. Now, you are about to see some different sources of information about bats. You're going to have to read through them carefully, or listen to me reading through them carefully, and make notes under the headings that you were given on the previous slide. You can stop and rewind as often as you like. You might want to use bullet points to record the information. You certainly don't have to write in full sentences just now. Later, when you come to write your full report, then you will have to write in sentences. Don't try to include everything and don't copy down everything from each slide. Part of what you're being assessed on here is whether you can choose what the important information is. Now, some of the slides will have a lot of information that's important, and some will have less, but you will have to make some decisions. You might want to look at all the slides first, and then go back and start making notes. Here is our first source. It's a page called Bat Fact, sorry, Bats Facts. Number one, bats are mammals, i.e. they give birth to live young. Two, they have fur. Three, they eat only insects. Four, they usually have one baby each year. Five, they have been known to live for 30 years. Six, they are not blind. Seven, they have excellent echolocation systems which help them fly and catch food in the dark. And there's a little note at the bottom that tells us that echolocation means determining the position of objects by means of supersonic vibrations echoed from them. Eight, there are 13 species of bats in Britain. 
9. The commonest weighs 5 grams and has a wingspan of 20 centimetres. And 10. The largest weighs 30 grams and has a wingspan of 35 centimetres. Now you will probably find that there is a lot of important information on this slide, but remember you don't have to copy it all word for word. When you come to include any of this information into your final report, you'll have to try and write it in paragraphs and sentences and not as it is here, a list. So remember that when it comes time to write your final report. Here's a diagram telling us about a typical day for a bat in summer. If we look at the top of the diagram, it says at noon a bat would be asleep. At 3pm there would be some movement and chattering. At 6pm the bat would be sleeping. At 9pm it would be flying and feeding. In the green circle at the bottom we can see that at midnight the bat would be resting. At 4am, 4, 4 in the morning, it would be flying about and feeding. At 6am it would be sleeping. And at 9am it would be sleeping. So that gives us an idea of how a bat would spend a typical day in the summer. Bats in the attic. Mrs Robertson looked in alarm at the mouse droppings on the loft floor. She called her husband. Jack, come here. We will have to do something about this. We must have mice. They will destroy all my old furniture if we don't get rid of them. Mr Robertson bent down and rubbed the small dark shapes with his finger. They crumbled. It's all right, Mildred, he said. These are bat droppings. See how crumbly they are. The bats must be hiding in the dark crevices at the back of the loft. They won't harm anything. Just put a newspaper over your furniture so it doesn't get marked. I could do with the droppings. They make a really good fertiliser. Maybe my dahlias will win a prize at the show this summer. Now we'll just add, although this source is written as a dialogue, that's a conversation between two people, it does contain a bit of interesting information about bats. So you have to think about what that information is. Bat habitat. Bats used to live in the trees which covered Britain and in caves. Since our great forests have largely disappeared, they now live mostly in buildings. Because of the changing temperatures, they like to have several sites to choose from. They usually choose a site near large colonies of insects since these form their diet. Flying uses up a lot of energy and they eat a huge number of insects for food. Some estimate about 3,000 per night. Females need large amounts, especially when they are suckling their young. In winter, bats hibernate in cool parts of buildings, in caves and in the hollows of trees. Vanishing bats. Why do we see so few bats today? Woodlands have vanished. Caves and mines have been blocked with rubbish. Mining and potholing has disturbed their homes. New farming methods have reduced the hay fields and marshlands where the insects lived. Pesticides have killed the insects. Building works have frightened them away. And chemicals used for timber treatment have killed bats. And here's our final source, bat law. It is an offence to intentionally damage, destroy or obstruct access to any place that a bat uses for shelter unless the Nature Conservancy Council has been consulted. Now that you've had a chance to look at all the different slides with different sources on them and you've taken your notes, you should be ready to write your report. In order to be successful in your report, you should write at least 250 words. You can write a bit more if you want to. That's about one side of A4 paper or maybe a little bit more. You should try and vary the way that you start your sentences. If you go back to the first source that we looked at, there was a series of bullet points about bats. Nearly all of them started with the word they. It would be very boring if you wrote your um, report and you started every sentence in the same way. So you're going to have to think about how you're going to link your different sentences together. 
That brings us on to our next point, which is to organise your information in a sensible way using linking words and phrases. So again, it shouldn't just seem like a jumble of information. Okay, you have to make uh, sure that it seems as if you've chosen what's important and you've put it into a particular order. Finally, you have to put the information that you've found into your own words. Now, you don't have to go over the top here. One of the bullet points said that bats had fur. You don't have to change fur into a different word. But what we don't want you to do is just copy down what's in every slide without changing it either. So think about some of the skills that you've learned earlier in this year and last year when you were in first year about putting things into your own words and try and put that into practice here. All right, when you're ready to write your report, the easiest way to do that is probably straight into your class notebook. You can type it straight in there and you should have a page there, your e-jotter. If you're having any trouble with your class notebook, you can always try writing on a bit of paper and uploading a picture. Or you can do it a different way. You can send me a message and we'll sort it out. I'm sure this is the first week we've been doing e-learning. There will probably be a few problems. But if you get your work done and get it to me in some way, or send me a message if you're having trouble. If you're not sure about anything, also please send me a message. Good luck and hopefully I'll hear from you all soon.